So my name is Giovanni. I am the blockchain director for Porium. And so my background is in engineering. So I've been an engineer for 15 years. I've been building protocols in the Web3 space since 2015. Um, so, but now, you know, I'm with a wonderful team, Corium, as their director of blockchain. And so today, what we want to do is introduce you to where we see the next evolution of chains to be going to focus on institutions. So, how many people in here have ever heard of Corium before today? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so, uh, first slide. Okay, so we're going to start with the conclusion. Okay. The conclusion is we believe that mass adoption will not happen without the institutions. And so because this is our hypothesis, we set out to foundationally build tooling for these institutions to be able to build on Web3 in an effortless way. And we'll show you what that looks like today. So typically you have two capability sets, a capability set for um, having a purely decentralized network and a capability set for having compliance in uh, KYC. And typically, there are chains in the middle there in that intersection, but they tend to be disjoint. So we believe the super ledger should encompass both of these capability sets and more. So let's define a super ledger really quick. So this is just simple set theory, so follow me. We have five capability sets here. The first capability set is the capabilities provided by having IPC connections over a set of chains, C. The second capability set is you have the capabilities provided by having ISO compliance across I institutions or enabling I, a set of institutions, I. Then C is you have the capabilities provided by having COSM WASM contracts on your chain that support a set of features, which in Turing complete languages should be infinite. And the S here is the capability set provided by having smart tokens on your chain that support a feature set F sub two. And lastly, here's the XRPL bridge that supports transferring liquidity over a set of tokens T. So what we're here, what we're doing is, this is a hyperdimensional Venn diagram pretty much, where what we're doing is we're taking the union of all of these sets. So first and foremost, Corium was built on Cosmos SDK. How many people know what Cosmos SDK is? Okay, good. Consider it a layer one, a layer zero that you then use to generate your layer ones, right? Similar to Substrate as well. And so Corium loves Cosmos SDKs due to many of its features. But what we've done is we've built four different packages on top of Cosmos SDK. Two of them for assets, which we'll talk about, and two of them for gas, uh, and pretty much defining a better model from our perspective on how gas is consumed and calculated. So. These two pictures here, both of these are the distributions of vanilla implementations of ERC-20 and 721 versus custom implementations. Who knows what vanilla, vanilla means? Vanilla means I give you a spec and you don't change anything, you just deploy it. But if you notice the distribution pattern here, majority of the implementations of these specs have no customization in it. This is important to note because if you know majority of developers are not changing anything in these specs, what's the point of them having to clone the spec over and over? Here's the, the if you know what Open Zeppelin is, the good thing about having implementation specs is it increases reusability, decreases security concern, ideally, increases development speed, and reduces friction for developers. However, developers still must implement it properly, which gives them, introduces human error, potentially, and the standards actually don't ensure deterministic behavior. Because if, you, if my contract in Solidity World is not verified and I override functions, but you think that the function, well, you see this function signature to be the same, and you assume that the, comp, that the computation is the same, that's dangerous, especially if the contract isn't verified. So that's the case leading up to what are smart tokens. So smart tokens are implemented, or a fundamental logic that we implemented at the protocol level that if we go back to the distribution of developers and what they're implementing, vanilla versus custom, take all of those vanilla functionality and give that to developers out the box, where if you want to make a smart token, you don't have to re-implement the, um, the logic. But the coolest thing about it is that with Corium, you can extend the smart tokens using Cosmosm smart contracts written in Rust. How many people know Rust in here? Good, I love that number. My favorite language. Last thing is, our smart tokens come in fungible form and non-fungible form. We'll talk about that. 
So we define a set of features of smart for smart tokens. Issuing, so minting, commissions and royalty, burning, freezing and whitelisting. If you think about combining freezing and whitelisting, this actually gives you the capability to enforce KYC on-chain, right? So we, we allow for developers to compose these uh, functionalities together or combine them for their smart token and not have to worry about the implementation details there. It just works out the box. So let's look at an example. How many people write code in here? Okay, I'm sure more people, you're just being shy. This is, this is a, a tech conference, okay. So for a smart FT, fungible token, this is the issue message. Pay attention to the final three lines here. The features, the burn rate, and the commission. That features, you pass in an a, a vector of integers, which denotes each of the features. So here we're just um, um, declaring it to use minting. The feature under that is the burn rate. If you set that, the burning is automatic on transference. For the commission rate, is the same. If you set it, the commission is automatically taken out when sending the token. And you set these at issuance time, clearly, but I wanna make that clear. So here's for NFT, same structure, features, same thing. The difference here is instead of commission, you have royalty rate. So, which brings us to another set of capabilities that we talked about earlier, which is interoperability with IBC. So if you don't know what IBC is, it's inter-blockchain communication. Consider it a protocol that allows chains to talk to each other. At first, this allowed Cosmos chains to talk to each other. But now, if you take one thing away from this slide, that very last bullet point, every one of you should remember. Because if you Google IBC Solidity now, EVM chains are starting to implement this. And there's a big chain that just started to do this publicly, I won't say their name. But this now means in the near future, you're gonna see EVM chains and Cosmos chains talking to each other almost out of the box, which is unheard of. Interoperability is the future, and you know this already. Another thing we can do with IBC is on Corium, we work with stablecoin issuers to issue the stablecoins on Corium. But now that we have IBC, we can tap into ecosystems that already have stable coins and then start to interact with them over IBC without having to get the issuers to come to Corium. So it allows us to cover both use cases there. So in regards to ISO 222 compatibility, our team has worked pretty, uh, pretty hard to experiment with how do you represent ISO compliant messages on chain. So we've experimented with doing this in smart tokens and Cosmosm, and now we're working with industry experts to ensure that the implementation is solid so we can actually bring it to market and our partners. So, a little interesting story. We had a partner who shall remain nameless, and even though they were using the best infrastructure provider out of our partners, which is Zeev, right? I think that it's interesting when you start thinking about we had a bridge that eventually the team didn't do their job and now they're no longer really in existence. So it forced us to have to build our own bridge. And now in doing so, we maintain the bridge, but in roughly two or three months, we've already transferred over a million dollars in tokens from XRPL to Corium. And this was made out of necessity because of the partner. But interesting thing here is this liquidity from XRPL would seemingly be inaccessible outside of this bridge. Because if you look at the bridges from XRPL to the rest of the world's chains, it's not a lot of players in that space that are doing it well. So here's our set of wallets. We have other wallets that we're working with to finalize. But if you want to do anything with Corium, build on Corium, you can look at these wallets. There's, there's another partner on here, Kepler. They're not on here, but they're one of our uh, wallet partners as well. So I'm going to spend some time on this. For the developers in the room, we obviously focus on helping you. So here's a set of things that we've built and are building to do so. So the first thing up there, and this is alpha, if you're interested, you can go to playground.corium.dev. We just, the CICD was just fixed today, where you can, it's like an ID in the browser for Cosmosm chains in general. Obviously the default chain is Corium, but you can build your code in the browser, but if you're not a developer, you can just choose a template that we've already audited and verified so that you can then launch smart tokens out the box in a few seconds, or you could take a smart token template, customize it, et cetera. The second thing there is obviously we built several templates for developers to copy and paste, which at our hackathons like yesterday, developers find it easier if we give them the code and they run with it and audit it. Everybody uses Stack Overflow if you code anyways. Um, Another thing we're doing is we're integrating with MetaMask Snap now so that you can have a smart token factory in the browser 
where if you're a non-developer, you can build fully customizable and functional smart tokens without having to worry about code. Under that, we have front-end DAP templates, right, for the front-end devs out there. We also have interactive hands-on courses, and we're growing that, uh, that set as well. But the last thing there is some alpha here. So we, one of our partners maintains Corium.js, which is the JavaScript li uh, library for you to interact with the Corium, uh, SD with the Corium chain. But we're also experimenting with, this is alpha, cross-chain smart tokens. So before IBC Solidity, we were prototyping the bridges to go from Corium to Solidity. But what that requires is you have to put a contract on the EVM chain that then reflects the logic of your smart token. But you can't rely on the developer to do that for our smart token. So we want to give um, the, this uh, Solidity smart token library to you. The last thing there is Alpha as well. How many people know what Unreal Engine is? How many people play video games at all? You guys are lying. OK. Um, we're also experimenting with being able to provide an Unreal Engine SDK in C++ so that developers can drop in Corium logic for smart tokens and just interacting with the chain in C++ easily. Drag and drop stuff. So this is also some alpha. We have a booth here. You can meet the developer who built this himself. These are soul bound NFTs and we've minted a hundred of them. And we have some interesting stuff planned for the NFTs. I'm not going to tell you now, but just trust me. We've already claimed maybe 20 of them, 30 of them, and it's the first day. So if I were you, go to our booth, talk to the team, get a code so you can get one because I'm going to tell you, you want one, but then also you can win 5K core. So if you do the math, look up Corium, you'll see how much that is, but go get you a soulbound NFT. One thing to say about them real quick, think back to the features I walked you through. NFTs on Corium are soulbound by default if you enable whitelisting, because that means before you send it to somebody, you have to whitelist them. If you don't whitelist anybody, nobody else can get it, right? So if I minted soulbound NFTs and gave it to you and you don't have the power to whitelist it in some way, then you can't send it. So real quick, we have grants as well for the people who are building or who have ideas. Please come talk to us. Here's some quick tidbits about our grants. The DEX so far, our DEX team has replaced their CW20 or e ERC20 and Cosmosm with smart tokens now, so that's their core token. Also, grantees have used smart tokens to help govern external facing tokens and internal representative tokens, like staking tokens. And also, grantees have used smart tokens to create token gated media content. So think about YouTube where you need an NFT to view that video, or you need a set of tokens to view that video. Out the box, one more thing. Our, our current grant application process closes in a few days. If you're interested, go to corium.com slash grants. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of opportunity here if you're not really familiar with the Cosmosm space. It's like, it's like EVM in 2017, before DeFi winner maybe. So lastly here, and I have to say this to the team at home, it's an absolute pleasure to be a part of this team. And you don't get to see their face often if you know about Corium, but I'm telling you there's some smart people working on this. And I have to give a shout out to them because they work really hard and they think about it a lot. And more importantly, they care about this problem a lot. So it's a pleasure to be a part of the team. And there's actually more people who's not on this slide, so do not hate us, uh, team. You know who you are, we love you. But it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of this team. And I'll leave you with this. Obviously, this super ledger term is more for like psychology for you to understand what we're trying to do. So don't harp too much on the term. But hopefully you understand how we're combining these capability sets together to, to be able to support the two capability sets of having a purely decentralized network and also having compliance-based chains without wavering on either one. And sometimes when you try to optimize for either one, it can seem diametrically opposed. Like you, you're doing one and it's like a trade-off. But we believe with the approach that we've taken, the foundation is there so that we can not only answer those two capability sets, but the other ones that I also walked you through. So remember, ISO compatibility, IBC, smart tokens, um, our XRPL bridge, and Cosmosm. So once again, you could be anywhere in the world, but thank you for attending my talk today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you see what we're going for. And hopefully you feel a little bit inspired to start building on the Super Ledger. So thank you. Once again, I'm Giovanni. Follow me on social media. Thank you.